You are watching No Apologies on Beck. I'm your host, Lori Hins, and with me tonight, very pleased to have a uh, remoting in from sunny Florida, I believe, Murray Sabrin. He is the founder of the Sabrin Center for uh, Free uh, Enterprise, also author extraordinaire. Murray Sabrin, thank you very much for being on the program with us again. It's always well, good to have you. Thank you, Lori, for inviting me. Uh, these are times when uh, we have to tell the truth about what's happening in the economy and how um, I think economically ignorant the people who are making policies, whether they're in the White House, in Congress, or at the Federal Reserve, are doing because uh, every mistake that can be made is, are, uh, is being made right now in Washington, D.C. Absolutely agree with you. Now, you are the author of multiple books, but one of them that just really stands out to me is your book that is titled Why the Federal Reserve Sucks. It Causes Inflation, Recession, Bubbles, and Enriches the 1%. And this is from 2019, and it could not be more prescient in 2019 to 2022. Well, I wrote the book when I was on sabbatical in 2017. I wanted to write a book since I taught financial history in the United States to give us a, a, a financial history of what happened from the 1990s to the mid 2000s. And what it shows is that Fed chairman, such as Alan Greenspan, who was there for 19 years and um, followed by uh, Ben Bernanke, really misunderstood what was happening in the economy. And they were following the template of previous Fed chairman, which is print money in order to stimulate the economy by keeping interest rates artificially low, which generates an unsustainable boom, which leads to inflation, which leads to a massive transfer of wealth from low and middle income folks to the wealthiest people in the country. And then it leads to a massive decline in the economy. So we had the dot-com bubble bursting. We had a recession in 2000, 2001. Then Greenspan put the uh, pedal to the metal, increased the money supply after that. That gave us the housing bubble. And then that housing bubble burst and Ben Bernanke came in in 2006 and kept it going until the housing bubble burst in 2007, 2008, giving us the worst recession since the Great Depression with a massive decline in the stock market. And then we we're off to the races uh, with Bernanke and Yellen increasing the money supply again. And that led to the, uh, the, the everything bubble. Everything has been inflated. Stocks, bonds, real estate, artwork, you name it. Everything's been inflated. And now, uh, because of the lockdown, the Fed gave us an, uh, not a recession in the, in the classical sense of the word, but they gave us an implosion in the economy and a massive decline in the stock market in one month. And then this enormous bubble since March of 2020 that uh, apparently ended in uh, January of 2022, the market skyrocketed and now it's correcting. And so the question is, is this a uh, beginning of another major decline in the stock market that could extend well into this year and into next year? Or is this a, a temporary decline and that will uh, lead us to another round of uh, boom in the stock market? So the jury is out on that, but it all depends on what the Federal Reserve does. Right now, they say they're going to fight inflation by raising interest rates. But uh, they're not raising interest rates high enough in order to dampen the inflation. Because if you remember, Laurie, what happened during the last major inflation cycle with Paul Volcker, he raised interest rates well above the rate of inflation. Since inflation is running over 8%, that means interest rates would have to be well over 8% to really crush inflation, which Volcker did in the early 1980s when inflation went from 12% to 3% in two years. Wow. Now, I, I i don't know if you'll think this is funny, but I saw a cartoon uh, this week that had a, a, a picture of Janet Yellen on it, and it had a bubble next to it, and she was saying, recession is transitory. <laughs> well, it always is. Recession lasts no more than a couple of years, except when you had the Great Depression that lasted a full decade, a, a really incredible phenomenon. When In the past, uh, depressions uh, prior to the Federal Reserve lasted about one or two years, and then we had a a major depression in the 1890s that lasted about three, four years. But what happens when you have a depression? It means that all the distortions that took place during the unsustainable boom are being liquidated so we can go back to, quote, a natural economy where supply and demand determine what's being produced and what's being consumed rather than all this cheap money that the Federal Reserve or the banks were creating prior to the Federal Reserve uh, being uh, uh, created in 1913. So again, these cycles have been with us for more than 200 years. They've been with us since the central bankers uh, began in the uh, late 17th uh, century. And this is a phenomenon that the 
economics profession apparently doesn't understand because the people who are leading the Federal Reserve are coming from the economics profession or the banking sector, which they should know something about money and banking, but apparently they don't because they keep on making the same mistakes over and over again. And who gets hurt the most? It's the mom and pop business on Main Street. It's the blue collar worker. It's the, uh, the low income, middle income, white collar worker, because they're the ones that get laid off first. And so we have a mess on our hands. And uh, the reason I wrote the second book is to uh, give uh, entrepreneurs an opportunity to find, to see how they can navigate this boom bust cycle. But the, but the first book on why the Federal Reserve sucks, the subtitle tells it all. It causes the inflation. Then we have the inevitable recession. We have a massive transfer of wealth. It enriches the 1%. It gives us all these bubbles. And the solution is quite simple. Laurie, it's stop printing money and stop trying to micromanage the interest rates, which should be set by the market. After all, all our prices that we buy that are, of goods and services that we buy are set by supply and demand. So let interest rates, which is a price of money, to, pay, to put it simply, should be determined by savers and investors instead of the Federal Reserve pumping money in like crazy, and which they did in 2020. Uh, it was the most massive increase in uh, money printing that I think we saw in the history of the country. And so now this, the, they're, they're telling us, well, we don't know why the inflation occurred. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out if you create money, it goes into people's pockets and that allows entrepreneurs to raise prices because they see that people are willing to pay a lot of money for the things that they're offering to, to uh, buy and sell in the marketplace. And for Biden to call uh, all companies greedy, you mean two years ago they weren't greedy as much as they were today when prices of oil was was stable and there was and, and the price of gasoline was half of what they were today so again biden is doing a great disservice to the american people he's telling us the villain is the oil companies or putin no the villain is in the eccles building where the federal reserve is located and in washington dc in the white house and the congress which keep on spending money that they don't have and the federal reserve is filling that hole by printing it up well, there was a recent hike by the Fed in the interest rate, and that is going to not help the situation, obviously, is it? Well, what it will do is uh, it's putting a damper on housing already because the 30-year mortgage rate went from 3% beginning of the year to 6%. I don't recall interest rates doubling in that short period of time. And with housing prices elevated, it means a lot of people can't afford a mortgage these days because they just don't have the income in order to pay the monthly payments. And so they're going to be going out of the market at the, at the lower and middle end of the, of the uh, housing sector. And then we'll see how long it takes for this uh, increase in interest rates to uh, really dampen demand across the country we know housing prices have skyrocketed all across the country rents have skyrocketed across the country i just saw a table the other day austin texas had a, like a 40 percent increase in rents the past year and other cities have had more than 20 percent increases it shows you how hot the, uh, the the real estate market is uh, it's great for landlords it's not so great for tenants because their purchasing power is really being hurt be by paying these higher rents which takes up 30 40 percent of their income so people's purchasing power for other goods and services will be declining and so we'll probably see a slowdown in consumer spending uh, very soon if it's not already here and that means that companies will have to either lower prices in order to get consumers back, back into the stores or they'll have to lay off people to uh, keep their profit margins up. And so we have a mess on our hands, a, a typical business cycle mess that the Federal Reserve and only the Federal Reserve is responsible for. Thanks for sticking with us on No Apologies on Beck. I am your host, Lori Hins from sunny Bismarck and from sunny Florida, Murray Sabrin, founder and author, founder of the Sabrin Center for Free Enterprise. And we really appreciate your take on the economy and you're a prolific author. So we really appreciate you being on the program again with us, Murray. We're talking, we were just recently talking about the interest rate hike and uh, the fact that it is actually the largest hike by the Fed since 1994. What solution wise would you see if you could have have an audience with the Fed, and they really should just be watching this show. Uh, yeah. What would you tell them? Well, th this is very difficult because the Fed had really let the uh, horse out of the barn by uh, just printing so much money in 2020. What they need to do is stop printing money, let interest rates find their natural level in the marketplace between savers and borrowers, 
and just get out of the way of the economy. They cannot micromanage the economy. Even though they have a mandate for full employment and low inflation, that's not a mandate they can, uh, they can fulfill. What they need to do is make sure that the uh, banking system is strong, make sure that checks are cleared in a timely manner, and otherwise, just be a cop on the beat so there's no financial fraud going on in the economy. That's the most important thing they can do. But as far as interest rates go, uh, there is no evidence in the, in the literature that micromanaging interest rates is, is sustainable for giving us prosperity for the long run. What gives us prosperity for the long run is all the great ideas of inventors and then taking those ideas and putting them into goods and services by the entrepreneurs. That's the way a free market economy works. And if the Federal Reserve officials understood that, they would not try to do what they try to do, which is try to micromanage the economy by setting interest rates, by adjusting the Fed funds rate, that the, that's the interest rate that banks mm -hmm. borrow from each other, and just get out of the way of the financial system, except playing a very important role of a cop, cop on the beat, making sure that there's no financial fraud. Excellent. I was reading a U.S. News & World Report article recently, and I'm going to quote to you for what they said in here, quote, overall economic activity appears to have picked up after edging down in the first quarter, the Fed said in its statement accompanying the news of their uh, rate hike. Job gains have been robust in recent months, and the unemployment rate has remained low. Inflation remains elevated, reflecting supply and demand imbalances related to the pandemic, higher energy prices, and broader price pressures. End quote. What do you have to say about that quote? Well, they don't talk about the money supply increasing 25% in 2020, which is has been uh, has been uh, spreading through the economy, raising prices across the board. Then you throw on the pandemic lockdowns, the supply chain disruption, and you get the perfect storm of prices going up at an accelerated rate. And the question is, how long will these prices continue to go up? No one knows the answer to that. But there is evidence that since the money supply has been increasing at a much lower rate the past several months, that we should see some price relief in 2023 or 2024, but not now. I think this year we're going to see pretty robust inflation numbers because uh, people still are spending money. They still have money in their pockets. But there's a lag between the supply of money increasing and the prices. So if the history is any guide, then we should see higher inflation continuing through this year and then maybe a slowdown in 2023 and 2024. But if the Fed decides to reverse course, we could be in a permanent inflation cycle for at least 10, 15 years, like we saw from the mid 60s to the early 80s. That was a 16 year inflation cycle with ups and downs of inflation. And that culminated in the 12 percent inflation, 13 percent inflation of 1981, 82. And then Volcker crushed that inflation, as I pointed out earlier, to 3% in a, in a year or two, which was an amazing feat. And so that that led to the great boom of the 1980s, uh, but that also was fueled by some cheap money. And then, of course, we got the, uh, the SNL crisis in 1990, 91. So again, this is history repeating itself over and over again. Now, you look at those cycles, and you, have, you and I have talked many times about a possibility, the timing of a recession, but I keep hearing the word recession bandied about in the press a lot recently, like as if people are already thinking that we're into that recession era, but I don't think we're quite there yet, correct? Well, the thing is, the second quarter ends June 30th. Now, the first quarter was a contraction GDP, gross domestic product. If GDP contracts in the second quarter, that is the textbook definition of a recession, two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. But the point is, we've never had a recession that I'm aware of where interest rates are well below the rate of inflation. Usually you have a recession when interest rates are skyrocketing above the rate of inflation, and that slows down the economy to a crawl. We haven't seen that yet. So as long as interest rates are below the rate of inflation, I think the economy can be perking along, maybe not at a robust fashion, but at least it won't be contracting like they do in previous recessions. So we'll see what happens for the second half of uh, 2022, whether the economy is, is weaker than uh, the, the people in Washington think it is. And we'll see how consumers react, how entrepreneurs react to the uh, tightening of credit, if in fact that is occurring right now.
I think the last time you were on with us, we talked about the yield curve inverting, and it did, and then it flipped back again. Right. And so then we're left going, okay, usually the prediction is after that yield curve inversion, then there's a certain finite amount of time that predictably you would have a recession right. afterwards. Well, this is, this is new territory with the interest rates where they are. Well, the thing is, that what I look at is not the two-year and 10-year difference, but I look at the three-month Treasury bill and the 10-year, uh, and that hasn't inverted. That's not even close to being inverted. So mm -hmm. unless that inverts very soon, uh, we're not gonna, I don't think we're gonna have a recession this year. We may have a slowdown in economic activity, but not a full-blown recession where unemployment will skyrocket. And that's what typically happens at the beginning of a recession. The unemployment rate starts us to increase and increase and increase and accelerates as employees realize they don't have enough demand in order to keep the workers they have on staff. And so we'll see exactly how 2022 uh, unfolds for the next six months. Any uh, suggestions for entrepreneurs, small business owners on how to weather this, well, this limbo that we're in right now before it, one thing or the other happens? I mean, hopefully we don't I mean, the unemployment thing that's going on right now, too, sorry, but I'm, I'm squirrel. I'm thinking unemployment all of a sudden. But I have so many friends who are business owners who are really struggling with keeping and, and getting people employed. And yes. it, I know that it's pervasive around the country as well. Well, that's the thing. I don't think we've ever had a recession where it's difficult for employers to get employees. We've never had that. So employ, employers should be raising cash now as much as they can, mm -hmm. make sure that uh, they get the productivity out of each worker that they possibly can, and uh, maybe run some sales to induce uh, consumers to come to their stores and, and buy goods. In other words, it's better to have a small profit margin than to have mm -hmm. losses. I mean, it's better to have a three or five a percent profit margin than to have a three per five percent loss on each item that you sell so sure. uh, my advice would be for entrepreneurs to really be very flexible in their pricing in order to make sure their sales are robust how about consumers and regular citizens any suggestions for um people who are feeling the biden inflation well, the is, crunch? If, you think infl if you think inflation is going to accelerate or stay high for the rest of the year i i would tell people listen buy as many things that are, have long shelf life as possible because if you buy something today that may be up five percent by the end of the year you're saving five percent in the sure, bank yeah. so you may as well buy items today and 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 save five ten percent because we don't know what the supply chain will be over the next six months so you might as well start doing some anticipatory buying so at least you have money that's being working for you in a very better way than they, if you kept it in the bank. Excellent, excellent advice. Well, great advice for entrepreneurs. Uh, if you want to find his books, you can find them on Amazon. One is called Why the Federal Reserve Sucks. It causes inflation, recession, bubbles, and enriches the 1% from 2019. The other book is Navigating the Boom Bust Cycle by Murray Sabrin, an entrepreneur survival guide. And that one came out in October of 2021. Great books. And as always, great advice, Murray. Thank you so much for being on the program. We appreciate you.